The art of the blend. The NBA's power forward has evolved from a position of sheer power and sometimes raw athleticism. Old school Hall of Famers like the Mailman and Sir Charles set the foundation for the new generation who will add to the position's rich heritage. Passing, court vision, ball handling, long range shooting and rebounding, highly coveted by successful NBA teams, have transformed the power forward position to new heights and made it truly dynamic. And so we welcome you back here to Open Court on NBA TV. Uh, talking about your position as a, as a power forward. When, when, do, when do we even start talking about stretch fours? Suddenly that's become, that's become the thing, and everybody has to have one. It only works with certain players. I mean, if, if you're playing with LeBron James, Chris Bosh is a stretch four. That only works if you're playing with a guy like LeBron James who's unguardable. Because if you got a stretch four out there, I would never leave him. This kind of goes back. I think it started with Dirk Nowitzki as being that stretch four. But we, we mentioned it. To me, Bob McAdoo was the original stretch four. It's funny. I, I feel like, I feel like, uh, like in my years, I had the pleasure of playing. You know, my Detroit years, I played with Rasheed and, and C, even C. Webb and McDice. And we called it like a shooting big. Mm-hmm. And I think now that they call it a stretch, it's because it's, it's it stretched all the way to the three-point line. Mm -hmm. These guys shot really twos, like long twos. She shot threes, but Dice, C. Webb, these guys were very good. O'Core, very good, just, you know, long twos. Now they call it a stretch three, a stretch four. That's because they, they're stretching all the way out to the, to the three-point line now. And I think the stretch started, you know, like you said, Matt could do those guys, but in my opinion, the evolution started in my generation with guys like Magic and Chuck. Now I'll explain. You saw Magic being six foot nine and he could dribble. Remember the stereotypes of basketball, big fellas on that end, little fellas on this end. When Magic started dribbling, he was like, no, big fellas on this end too. Whether it was Steve Smith, whether it was other guys. When Barkley took it behind his back, went down, dunked two hands, it was like, okay, big fellas can now lead the break. So now in practice, we're doing things just as simple as just take the middle lane. You know, big fellas never get to take the middle lane. Mm -hmm. So in high school, I see these guys do it. I'm not thinking about Dirk or, or any, anybody else. We're older than them. We're thinking, no, this is part of the league now. And then on the other end, if you're dominating as a power forward and you got a center that's okay, then what they'll do is bring Robert Ory in, who's not a four, but he's going to stretch me out. Right. So I never looked at it as the one guy. I look at it as they're going to put someone in this position to take away the help from the big guy. So I can't help on the pick and roll, so I got to get back to this guy. It's just that one guy in a position of not coming out. And also, as a big fella, we're not used to coming off of screens. We don't know how to play defense up top. We don't even know how to go through a screen. So for me, it was seeing all the big guys do the stuff that Isaiah and them could do, and it made me excited as a big guy because we never got to do it. And I think a lot of people aren't taking that into the account. You got Rashid and those guys because we all w were saying, I'm Isaiah when we played one-on-one. -on -one. Right, right, and I think right. that kind of helped, too, the evolution See, of watching these guys. When I grew up, it was a stretch four, even now, is really a, a three-man yeah. that just moves to the four. Like, it's an undersized, uh, uh, a guy who is a three, and he's really two inches taller than he should be. You know, he's not really a four. Don't want that contact. He don't want the yeah, contact. Yeah. He, he doesn't want it. Mm -hmm. So he's really a three, and that's who it is. And, you know, even when we played, we had a guy named Matt Bullard. Mm -hmm. and, you, and you talked about how that stretch four only works when you have Akeem Olajuwon. Yeah. Because now you're going to leave him. He couldn't yep. handle the ball. He wasn't really a great ball handler, but can stretch the floor. Okay, look at all these guys. Uh, Kevin Love is a great shooter. Dirk is a great shooter. Chris Bosh has turned into a really good shooter. Millsap is trying to do it. He's, he's improved a, a lot. Yeah. Well, you that, don't think so? He's a, he's a, no. he's a, he's falls in the Mac McDice but, range. But he just started shooting no, threes. But he's, twos. He, I know, but he shot a lot more threes yeah. last year. They don't have yeah. Aldridge on starting to shoot threes. Yeah, they don't have Lamarcus. Yeah. They don't have Aldridge, the best power yeah, forward. He's the, the best in the league. On there. Wait, Wait, uh, no, they're talking about stretch. stretch. I'm, I, yeah. Marcus Aldridge. That's, that's what I'm saying. The playoffs? He could be. See, a, I don't consider that stretch. <laughs> I would consider that a shooting big. Well, because he don't shoot the three. Right. Yeah. All right. So, question. Especially when it you know, pertains to that list. There was only one guy on that list that... With the exception of Jordan and LeBron. Right. Because they were different. There was only one guy on that list that was the main guy. So my question is...
Can your main guy be a stretch four guy? No. Because Dirk, I mean, no. Dirk, I mean, because Dirk and Whiskey is the only main guy that was a stretch four guy that led his team to a championship. See, but I think Dirk is a little bit different. Yeah. I think Dirk and Kevin Durant, they're a little bit different because they get the ball. When we start talking about stretch fours, we're basically talking about who stands out there and opens up the court. Yeah. I don't think Dirk is a stretch four. Uh, I think Dirk, Dirk's a guy you get a ball to and let him go. Especially Dirk, Dirk in his earlier years, you could put him at that Free elbow throw. line area or that pinch post. He did the fadeaway with the knee up where guys now, mm -hmm. Kevin Durant, are copying him yeah. with the fadeaway. So he had a back-to-the-basket game as well. But... On the flip side, he just so happened to be one of the best 6'10", 6'11", shooters our g right. this game has ever right. seen. I think the stretch Rich floor has eliminated strategy from the game, too. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, we were coming to the game, and there was no way we were going to play against you. You weren't going to play for 45 minutes and have two fouls. <laughs> it just wasn't going to happen. You weren't going to play the game for, for 45, 40. The best players now very rarely get in foul trouble. And when they do get in foul trouble... I very rarely see a point guard come down and say, oh, see, Webb's got three fouls. I know I can get a basket off him because he don't want to get up that, he want to pick up that fourth. They never go back at him. So consequently, the strategies of the game, the offense, the way the, the offense have, uh, are being run, you know, it's just totally different. So I, I think the chess that we used to play in basketball, we don't play chess anymore. Play we checkers. just... Yeah, play checkers. Hey, hey, Reggie, as a three-point specialist, how do you assess where the where we stand uh, with the three-pointer and the emphasis some teams can put on that? It's interesting. When I came into the league in 87 and 88, the team average for, at the time, it was 27 or 28 teams, the league average was 130 made threes by each team. Last year... Last year, it was 635 average for all 30 teams. Ooh. So that shows you how much the three-point influx has been. Is it because of the international play? I don't know. It's a good but, thing or bad thing. You know what, Reggie? But I, I think... I mean... It's a bad thing. Well, what about points per game? When you came in in 87, 88, I guarantee you, most teams in the league were averaging close to... 100 points a night. But it was a lot more run and gun. It was a physical more play, but... Well, we, we ran more, we, too. We ran more, and it was it was much more physical. I think the league plays slower now. Yeah, because I think... I the rules are different now, too, though. Yeah, but I think... Because they cater to the yeah, offense I, now as opposed right, to when saying, we played. But I also think these guys... We see it every night when we're on television. Guys are half fast break. They won't even go to the basket. They spread out, they get behind a three-point line. It's it miss. on who's shooting. <laughs> <laughs> That's your question. Let me because you have a lot of bad guys who have been told that they're better three-point shooters than they really are mm -hmm. shooting threes. See, that's right. what I think. Go ahead, I, I, up. But I think this, though. I think the, the fact that, there, that so many more three-point shots are being taken is because, obviously, when we all came in the league, it was different. It was big guys. It was Shaq. It was Hakeem. It was David. It was Matumbo. It was Smiths. I think... It's a direct reflection of it's just no dominant big guys in the league, which means you're gonna space everybody out and you're gonna try to you're gonna try to run around and, and kick it off with three point shots. You don't have anybody, not very many guys you can throw it to and say, All right, go to work. Get everybody in foul trouble, go to work. We'll be ready when we get it. You don't See, have you don't I, have it. I, I agree, but I disagree in this part, Charles. To me, being a guy who shot threes and especially in a lot of part of his career. It just, it's allowed guys who can't play to stay in the league. Yep. Because if you just can be a specialist. When I, when, when honestly, when I first came into the league, you couldn't be a specialist. Mm -hmm. you, you, there were far and few guys who were just a defensive guy. Maybe there was a couple of those. And then there was guys. But even the shooters were basketball players. They still could handle it. They still could. But their best asset was shooting. Mm -hmm. Now, you could just go to a shooting machine and stay on it for three hours, and you might get a job. You might get a job, and that's all you have to do. Well, you couldn't do that before, and it just allowed bad players, which means bad coaching, which means now I have to coach the talent that I have, so, okay, just stand out there, which now I'm going to isolate. Now the ball that's is your moving, system, and though, all Kenny. of a sudden the game is slower and it's different. But if that's your system, and you, Greg Popovich, and you saying, okay, we got these three or four playmakers, we just need shooters. I don't need a shooter that's going to come in. But tell me one place. guy on their team that the only thing he does is can shoot. 
Danny Bonner. Green. Matt Bonner. I think Matt Danny, Bonner. I think Bonner. Danny Green could Steve defend. Milbank. He ain't showed you nothing else. Oh, I think he could defend. I think Danny, I think Danny Green, if you press, he could get the ball from free throw line to free throw line. But there are guys, that I wouldn't say on the Spurs team, and I don't want to call out all the guys, that if you said get to the free throw line, to the free throw line, and go around a cone, they're going to kick it out of bounds. I, and I don't disagree with you because I think shooting is a talent. I think shooting is a talent. It's a part of the game. Now, I understand, it's a but talent. everybody's not that should great. be your only talent. But I'm just saying, well, uh, we just can disagree because I think some guys just, they're defensive specialists. Mm -hmm. You know, they can't shoot a lick, they're defensive specialists. But I think Paul Silas is one of the best coaches I've played for. He was talking to me about Red R back one day. He says, he says, I said, how do we put our team together? He says, okay, this is what Red did. He says, figure out what every guy NBA talent is. Like, uh, and I'm not disparaging the guy, like Steve Kerr was a great shooter. That won championship because once you left him, he's going to make the shot. I think that's a pretty amazing talent. Because there are guys we leave open all the time. Well, let me say this. And, I mean, Steve Kerr wasn't a great scorer. No, he was just he was a, a great, great shooter. shooter. But also, if you watched him play at the University of Arizona, he was a point guard. He handled the ball. He bring, brought it up. Would you consider Steve a specialist, according to your thing? Like, the, that was the one thing he did and the only that thing That was the he best thing he did. Mm -hmm. But it became the only thing as he got older. But you got to remember, the, when he got older, he was playing with the best player Right, it, that ever. was as he, right, so as he got older. He needed to but when really he came in into on. the league, that was not the only thing he could do. There are guys coming into the league where that's the only thing they can do. When we, when we come back, stats can tell you some things, but they can never explain why, I don't know, uh -oh. Big Country Reeves owned Shaquille O'Neal. Uh-oh. Stories <laughs> like that. Really? And the guy that Isaiah Thomas hated to face when we come back. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to Vancouver? <laughs>